you guys can see, our girl Garcelle is out today. Garcelle, we miss you. You better hurry back and come back soon. But, y'all, we got some legends in the house today, and I'm not playing around. Our guest co-hosts today are a Grammy award-winning duo who helped change the face of hip-hop as one of the first all-female rap groups. You also just saw their story told in the Lifetime original movie, Salt and Pepper. Everybody, give it up for Salt and Pepper! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, no. Ladies, we got a lot to talk about, okay? So are you ready to keep it a hundy with some of us? Are you ready? All of us in girl chat. Yeah? Yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I, I know, right. I'm ready. I can feel it. First up, 22-year-old Chloe Bailey has only had her own Instagram for a month, and she's already dealing with a lot. Recently, Chloe posted a video in a t-shirt and underwear, burning sage in her room to spread some, quote, positive vibes. But then Chloe was met with the opposite of that, receiving lots of comments sexualizing her body, which she hadn't been prepared for. So Chloe took to IG Live in a very emotional video to explain how all of this is affecting her. Take a look. And I've been like really insecure for a long time. And I'm finally like at that place where I have self-confidence. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> And I'm really happy that I get to share that with you all. And I think it's so important and so special when a black woman can be strong and stand in her power in every single way. Ladies, what are your thoughts on what Chloe's going through? I happened to catch that the other day. And as a mom, it really hurt my feelings because I thought about my, my daughter. Um, I also know that when child stars grow up and they begin to become adults and explore their sexuality, people have a hard time with it. They want to keep them in that, that box that they're used to. And I can relate to this because um, with salt and pepper, as Peppa knows, you know, sometimes when we got super racy, like on none of your business, like in the mud and getting a little more sexual, even though I was, I was raised in the church. So I always had in my mind, you know, what was the line, what was too far. But I also wanted to explore my sexuality as a woman, my power as well. And I think that, you know, she probably feels sad because that's a natural thing, but she also wants to be accepted. And as we know, social media is a bullying place. You know, people can be super, super mean. So I feel really bad for her, but um, I think that, you know, as she gets older and grows into herself, then, we should get used to it like we all are. <laughs> used to being bullied on social media. Yeah, I think she learned there is like a cause and effect. I mean, she was, she was saying she was insecure, but she is beautiful. And like, you know, unfortunately, you know, she has like over like 1.4 million and people are paying attention. She didn't think, but yes, they are. And I think this is just a lesson learned for her to see that they are paying attention, maybe not in the way that she would like, but it's an eye opening, you know, unfortunately, you know, and she's, she's 22 going on 23. She's a young girl experience in that that you you know your image is important because it, it did affect you and people are watching so what you put out there cause and effect you know so like I said my daughter she's a good girl go, you know going grown like my daughter is the same age so I'm experiencing that the good girl gone grown thing <laughs> not good girl gone bad good girl gone grown I get it yeah I'm glad there born. were a lot of supportive messages to her, um, like Halle Berry. Um, a lot of people sent out supportive messages um, to her, trying to encourage her, because I think when we all saw it, we felt bad. I personally think it's a bunch of jealous-ass women that's mad because she 22 and young, and, that, and they worried about they dudes. I mean, it's like, calm down. She 22. Yes. Let her live her life. <laughs> Stop being jealous and get on and get on the treadmill and and get your booty together. That's what I say. Social media is a mean place, and and most of them yes. coming from locked accounts. All those locked yes. accounts. Exactly. People. Exactly. <laughs> You have to, like, con consult these days sometimes. I'll be like, before I post anything, I'll be having a whole community. community. I'm like, I'm like, is this good to post? Are we good? <laughs> you know, it's like... Right, right. No, you're right, because, Peppa, it's... 
It's not only that, I think it has a lot to do with the platform and also right now what's going on with the culture. Like if you saw a woman who was, you know, barely dressed or maybe even like a, an art, that a piece of art that's like a body bust, you know, somewhere in a museum, we wouldn't tend to just immediately sexualize it. We'd see it for whatever the artist meant for, you know, to depict it. But if you put anything near naked on the gram or you show anything that shows skin, all of a sudden Instagram has puts a subliminal of sexuality on everything because we do see a lot of sexuality yeah. on Instagram. So even when a little girl, or not even a little girl, I'm sorry, but a, a young woman or a woman, any woman who is, you know, bearing thighs, wearing a bikini bottom, whatever, it can't just be a woman wearing, you know, a t-shirt and, and panties. It can be, it has to be a sexualized thing because of Instagram. And I also think, I know this is crazy, but I also think because the body of a black woman is so beautiful and it's many ways of curves and, 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 you know, lips and thighs and these things that we always point out. Now you can't see a female body just for being a strong female body. It's always got to be a sexual object. And so that's the sad thing about these young women who really is doing what a lot of us love to do is dance and sing in our own private time or in our own, yeah. you know, um, comfort. But because of yeah. Instagram or social media or the way a woman's body, society, a black you female know, body, Jeannie, society has to Jeannie, go and just make it a sexual thing. Jeannie, Jeannie, I get that. But you know what? They just mad. Okay? At the of end course. of the day, That's, yes. they just and mad. Immature, this happens every immature. day on Instagram. On Instagram, but y'all want to hear a completely different perspective? Women. Would they be having these kind of comments if that was a 22-year-old man in his room dancing around in his boxers? Yeah. No, it would be no. completely different. It Especially a 22 like year old man who is white. Oh, it would be completely different. So let's bring that into perspective. And why is that? And why as a society do we, one, over sexualize women just in itself? And then, two, you're right, women of color. Absolutely. It is a very real thing. We over sexualize these women. But I think this is a teachable moment overall. Yeah. Um, because even just seeing how emotional she was, I think at some point we've all done things that we look back and we're like, I wasn't ready for that or, or I didn't expect that kind of reaction or I didn't yeah. expect for people to view me in this certain way because of something I did or something yeah. I wore or the way I danced or something I posted. So I, I do think I'm glad that she's being so transparent because I'm sure that there's so many young women out there that can relate to what she's saying that like, why can't I be close to God and at the same time, you know, be confident, but I want to dance around and do both of these things. And I love that she was almost having that conversation out loud with herself. And I think yeah. a lot of people can relate to that. And again, it's a teachable moment because at some point she may say, you know what, I recognize I'm not emotionally and mentally prepared to deal yeah. with this yeah. kind of backlash. So maybe decide. I shouldn't be doing this. As an artist. Yeah. Oh, they just decide. mad. Yeah, but I'm yeah, talking how much exposure. Yeah, okay, I get it. <laughs> you know. Now, before we go to break, we just want to pay tribute to actor Dustin Diamond, who passed away Monday at the age of 44. Dustin is best remembered for playing the lovable and geeky Screech on the high school sitcom Saved by the Bell. Dustin had recently shared his cancer diagnosis with the world, and it was reported that Dustin tried his best to stay positive while undergoing treatment. Many of Dustin's co-stars shared tributes to him on social media this week honoring his memory. We here at The Real want to send our condolences to Dustin's family. Thanks for making our childhood a little brighter. We just had the pleasure of sitting down together for the interview special following the Lifetime movie that was number one Woo! in your time slot on that Saturday. The movie is such, Amazing. it got a great response. Lifetime is actually re-airing it this Sunday, February the 7th at 2 p.m. And if you didn't get a chance to see it yet, you have to tune in. Well, we actually have a clip, just roll it. Get in the booth. Put these vocals down. Come on. Here we go. Yo, that's that's your boyfriend. Are you sure about Yo, Fresh, give me that. All right. He doesn't even know. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Sandy, let's do this. Two, three. So, in public here, and we're in effect. Want you to push it back. Cooling by day, then at night. Working up a sweat. Hey! So good. Yeah. So good. It was Memories, so man. good. Ladies, 
What was it like seeing your story played out? And how has the response been since the movie has aired? <laughs> it's just a, an amazing feeling because it's been like 36 years. I'm like, dang, it's finally time that we've been talking about our stories. Now people can see it on the screen. I was like, so happy. It's a beautiful, yeah. and the positive feedback from everybody, really family. Yes. What about you, Saul? I mean, I went through the process with a little fear and trepidation, uh, a little emotional. I mean, who wants to go back and look at like how you hurt someone or how someone hurt you? It's kind of hard going through that process, the editing and, you know, working with the, the, um, the actresses and everything. And I kind of, you know, because we know Lifetime has a little reputation concerning our biopics. I was a little, you know, scared about that as well. But I have to say that um, the movie for me, when I did step away from being salt and just watched it, you know, as Cheryl and watched, you know, the, the friendship and what we went through of being women in, in an industry that's dominated by men, having children, you know, having to be able to uh, find our voice and deal with our business. And to me, it was just a story about two friends that was together before we were business partners, before we were salt and pepper, and all the ups and downs of what that looks like. And I feel like any woman can relate to this movie from that angle of being of a friendship so and being great. women in the music industry. That. Yeah. Definitely. I love that. Definitely. Ladies, with all that being said, it's no secret that DJ Spinderella has been speaking out publicly against the movie, claiming she was, quote, wrongfully excluded from every aspect of development and production and that she played an integral part an integral role in the group's story and success so i'm wondering if you can give everyone an update as to just where you guys stand with her right now yeah i reached out to spinderella um i feel like it's very unfortunate you know we've come to a crossroads where we have decided to agree to disagree um I definitely am open and Pep is open. We've talked about it. Our hearts are open, have always been open to Spinderella. As far as the public is concerned, I'm really um, happy about the people who know that they don't know everything. There's six sides to every story. And mm -hmm. we just hope that, you know, that we can come to some sort of resolution in the future. You never know, you know, God, you never know what God is doing. Um, uh, I just wanted to add to that, but I just want to clear up. I don't know. There is a part that when Spinderella do say that we excluded her, that part, Salt and I did reach out to consult with the movie because like Salt said, this movie was about a friendship of Salt, Sandy and Cheryl back in college. But yes, Spinderella joined us a part of it. She will always be, um, uh, we will always acknowledge her contribution what that she's done with us. She will always be our sister. We love her, but we have always made sure that she had the opportunity and the platform. We always encourage her to be Spinderella and be supportive of her. So um, that is um, yeah. in, very important. Perception is not reality. I hear that, and that is so great to clarify. And ladies, we love that you are here with us today. So keep on doing what you've always done. You always keep it real, and we love it.